Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us as we celebrate the 26th annual Chefs and Vintners Harvest Dinner. We know this year looks a little different than you're used to, but we're so glad you can join us. I'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge some of the many individuals who have made tonight possible. Our honorary co-chairs are Michael and Marcy Finney, and also acknowledge our honorary committee members. Our event co-chairs are Deborah Pollard of Fenimore Asset Management and Paige Rukert of Capcom Federal Credit Union, along with our planning committee members. Our sponsors, tonight's matching sponsors, are Capcom Federal Credit Union and Fenimore Asset Management. Our $5,000 sponsors are Ardent Mills, Hannay Reels, Wells Fargo, Majestic Media Group, B95.5, Times Union, and Filmworks 109. Our $3,500 sponsors are Death Wish Coffee, Hannaford Supermarkets, Tri-City Rentals, Masri Realty Partners, and Trusco Bank. Our $2,500 sponsors are Boucher Financial Group, County Waste and Recycling, Lemery Greisler, Marvin & Company, Finney Design Group, Saratoga National Bank, and Trust Company. And a special thanks to my friend, Tom Delarocco, for helping to source all the local products used to make tonight's fabulous meal. In addition to tonight's program, we are hosting an online auction filled with wonderful items. Bidding ends at nine, so please make sure to check it out and place your bids. If you are a winner of an item, our staff will contact you and arrange for contact-free delivery. Please visit the link below to place your bids. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our longtime friend, Chef Rick Orlando. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rick Orlando, and I want to welcome you to the 26th annual Chef and Vintners Harvest Dinner to benefit the Regional Food Bank of Northeast New York. You know, we've been doing this for a long time. When we started doing this food bank dinner, I had a lot of hair, remember that? And over the years, it's turned into really a huge event. Now this year, it's a little bit different because of COVID, it's a takeout dinner, but I want to thank you all for buying these amazing takeout dinners and the wine and supporting the food bank. This is really one of the biggest nights of the year for fundraising for the food bank. And the work that the food bank does, though it's crucial all the time, is even more crucial now because people are unemployed. More people need support and the food bank is there. They're there for people who work in businesses, they're people who are homeless. The food is there. This event is all about taking local New York food. And I want to thank Tom Della Rocco, who actually helps us source this local food for the chefs to cook. And we take the local food, turn it into food that you donate to eat, and then we feed local people. So it's a beautiful circle. Can't do it without you. Enjoy yourself tonight and enjoy your fabulous dinner. All right, let's talk about the fabulous meal that you're gonna be enjoying tonight, either at your dining room table, on your patio, or even on your couch, it doesn't matter. We have four amazing courses by four amazing chefs, if I do say so myself. The first course is my good friend, Jose Artech. He's from Shogun in Del Mar, and he made a beautiful butternut squash soup with his five spice pepita crumble and gorgeous dumplings. They're squash and apple dumplings. Refreshing, using New York product and emphasizing the New York strong theme, which we talked about. This is about dumpling soup, which is one of the great New York dishes from Chinatown. Our second course is by me, Rick Orlando, who is now uh, owner and proprietor of Flavor Maker Spices and the Richter brand line, and I'm doing pop-ups everywhere so you can find me. This is one of the classic, iconic New York dishes called a Waldorf salad. However, we did a little variation. It's got local smoked duck added to it with walnuts, celery, grapes, very refreshing. The third course is from Ken Keen from 677 Prime. And this is again, another iconic New York dish with a chef's interpretation. This is basically pastrami Reuben flavors, but a little different. It's a short rib with a pastrami crust with the sauerkraut cream. It's got Utica greens and root vegetables that are kind of done to get you that kind of corned beef and cabbage, uh, Reuben kind of flavor. Really, really delicious. And for dessert, Mark Delos from Mazone Hospitality made a really fun play on a New York cheesecake. It's a New York cheesecake trifle. You can see down the bottom, there's a cheesecake. There's a beautiful crumble. There's berries, candied lemon rind and whipped cream. So you have a chef's interpretation of a New York strong menu. Dumpling soup, Waldorf salad, pastrami, 
and New York cheesecake, all interpreted by four fun chefs. Thanks so much, enjoy your dinner. And I want Dominic Pernoma to tell you how fantastic the wine pairings are gonna be with all these dishes, because he's the guy who knows the wine. Thanks, Rick. Uh, happy to be back for my 16th uh, annual uh, Chefs and uh, Vintners Harvest Dinner. Um, again, Dominic Pernomo here to uh, tell you a little bit about the wines that we've selected to pair with this. Uh, normally we have a wine per course, um, but since you're in the convenience of your own home, uh, we thought we'd maybe just pair it down to two wines for this evening. Uh, so first off, to go with Chef Jose Artesh's soup, we have the semi-dry Riesling from Lamoureux Landing on the east side of Seneca Lake in the Finger Lakes. Because uh, miso and butternut tend to be a little bit sweeter flavors, a little more umami, we chose this wine because there's a little touch of sweetness, some ripe apple, some ripe pear, um, and a little bit of butterscotch in there as well. And with the roasted vegetables and uh, the herb regalta dumplings, there's some the perfect amount of acidity uh, that really cuts through that richness. Because the flavor maker himself, Chef Rick Orlando, has so much flavor going on in his salad, we can actually pair both of our wines tonight with this. The reason that you had with the first course would pair well because the, the, the brightness and freshness of the grapes. But the next wine I chose, the Cabernet Franc from Dr. Constantin Frank, uh, pairs well with the, the richness of the duck. Duck tends to have a little bit more fat to it, a little bit more richness, uh, and pairs so really well with a high acid aromatic uh, Cabernet Franc such as this. You're gonna get a little bit of licorice, a little bit of mushroom and earthiness, um, and just some really bright tart cherries that should really set this dish off. So please feel free to enjoy both wines with this. Send me a tweet at Dominic Pernomo. Let me know which is your favorite pairing for this course. Enjoy. For our main course tonight, from Chef Kenny Keene of 677 Prime in downtown Albany, we have Pastrami Braised Short Rib. Again, with this, we're choosing to go with this Cabernet Franc from Dr. Constantine Frank. The Frank family has been a longtime supporter of the Regional Food Bank um, in our ongoing efforts to help support those in our community. Again, with this, short rib, again, tends to be a really rich meat. It's cooked long and it's cooked slow. Uh, and then the earthiness of the root vegetables that were su such an abundance at this time of the year locally, um, this Cabernet Franc from Dr. Constantine Frank is the perfect pairing for it. Enjoy. For our last course from Chef Mark Delos of Mazone Hospitality, we have a New York cheesecake trifle. Anybody still have any of the reasoning left from the first course, second course? If you do, this will make a great pairing to go with the wild berry gelé, blueberry compote. This wine, again, has lots of acidity to cut through the richness, but I believe the, uh, the little bit of uh, sweetness that still remains in this wine is a perfect uh, accompaniment to the dessert that we have here. We hope you enjoyed tonight's dinner. Uh, we realize it's a strange time, but we hope, uh, we hope to see you again next year. Thank you. Thank you, Rick and Dominic, for telling us more about tonight's fabulous meal and wine pairings. I can't wait to enjoy it myself. We're all gathered virtually tonight to support the important work of the Regional Food Bank. To that end, we'd like to share with you more about the work we've been doing for the past six months in response to the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic and the deep impact it has had on our community. When the pandemic began in mid-March, we knew things would be difficult for many people. We knew we would be called upon to provide large-scale emergency food assistance as we have in prior disasters. But the scope of the problem and the level of need greatly exceeded our expectations. It hit everywhere hard and quick, and we've been expanding and adjusting to best meet the need ever since. Each month, we've been distributing around 50% more than last year. We're on track to provide over 60 million pounds of food this year. At times, we've had trouble getting food in, and at other times, we've had so much coming in, we weren't sure we could store it all. We've even been renting off-site space to house some of our refrigerated products since we've been fortunate enough to receive so much fresh and perishable food. Fresh food like that is really valuable for the people receiving it, and we're proud to be able to provide it. drive through pantries are a new addition to our food distribution model. drive throughs get the food directly from the truck to someone's trunk and they allow us to serve up to 500 to 600 families in a morning at just one location. We've partnered with municipalities, businesses, and organizations to bring drive through pantries to every county in our service area. drive through pantries have been such an extraordinary resource to the community. Catholic Charities, in partnership with the Regional Food Bank, have literally fed thousands of people all over the region. Catholic Charities has had the privilege of being engaged with about seven a month since COVID began. What's available is extraordinary produce, amazing meat, fresh dairy, milk, eggs, yogurt. And for families, it's a game changer. It makes all the difference to them. So wonderful partnership. We can't imagine doing it without the food bank and we're so grateful for all that they do. Seniors were impacted more than almost any other group when the pandemic hit and we partnered with many senior housing sites to make sure that seniors who could not safely leave their homes had good food to eat. 
Colony Senior Service Centers has loved working with the Regional Food Bank on senior food pop-up pantries. Every month, we know we're providing nutrition, hope, and compassion to a group of seniors who can most certainly use it, especially in these trying times. On March 16th, when the governor ordered schools shut down across the state, we saw unprecedented disruption and uncertainty. Because Backpack is school-based, we weren't sure that schools would continue to distribute the bags to students during the closure. However, the vast majority of our 250 Backpack partners continued their program without interruption because of the value they place on the program. The schools chose to make Backpack a priority because they understood it was a critical support to families who are struggling. In response to COVID, we increased the volume and variety of food in the bags by 66%, sent home additional fresh produce as well as frozen meats and dairy products to schools that had the capacity to get food home to students safely. When the school year ended, we made the decision to expand our summer backpack program to serve more communities and more families than ever before. Throughout the summer, we provided over 300,000 pounds of food to 2,500 children in 50 communities. As we look to the new school year with more questions than answers, one thing we know for sure is that the Food Bank stands ready to partner with schools to help meet their students' needs both inside and outside of the classroom. As you know, 2020 has been an unprecedented one for New York in many ways, with communities across our state impacted by COVID-19. That's why the work of the Regional Food Bank of Northeastern New York is more important now than ever. Through Governor Cuomo's Nourish New York program, the Food Bank has done tremendous work connecting families in need with New York State farmers who needed a place to sell their products. In a short time, the Food Bank and Nourish New York made a significant impact on our communities. Thanks to this collaboration, New York State dairy products, produce, and more have been provided to households in need across Northeastern New York. The Food Bank has purchased products directly from many New York State producers and dairy processors. Hudson River Fruit, Braise Eggs, Hudson Valley Fresh, Cabot, Chobani, and so many more. Thanks to this work, the Food Bank has put local New York food on the table of thousands of households. I thank the Food Bank for involving so many New York producers in the Nourish New York initiative, and I know that our growers truly appreciate it. And I thank them for their daily work and dedication to combating hunger and improving access to New York-grown, healthy, fresh foods to communities in need. I look forward to building on the Nourish New York initiative and continuing our partnership in years to come. Social distancing guidelines and limited space meant that when the pandemic began, our volunteer numbers immediately took a massive hit. In an ordinary year, volunteers complete the work of more than 30 full-time employees, but group sizes declined by nearly 70% at a time when we needed help the most. Knowing this need, a group of local companies came together to find us warehouse space and set it up to meet our requirements with pallet jacks and forklifts. They even allowed us to use the space and equipment for free. This collaboration saved us thousands upon thousands of dollars, and it allows us to safely host volunteers every day to make sure we continue sorting the donations that come in. You can see we haven't done this work alone, far from it. Support from the community has helped us feed more people than we ever could have imagined. The Food Bank will continue to be here to provide food assistance as long as this disaster lasts and beyond. We hope you will consider a donation today. As you've just seen, we've served so many in our community, but we know the need continues. Next, I'd like to introduce you to tonight's matching sponsors, Chris McKenna, President and CEO of Capcom Federal Credit Union and Chairman of the Board of Directors for the Capcom Cares Foundation, and Deborah Pollard, President of Fenimore Asset Management. Thank you, Mark. We are thrilled to once again partner with the Regional Food Bank for this tremendous event. This year, more than ever, the Food Bank has seen an increased demand in need within their 23 county service area. Due to this increased need, Capcom, in partnership with Fenimore Asset Management, has committed to matching all donations received tonight up to $15,000. We know the power of collective impact in our communities, and our hope is that each of you will lock arms with us for this worthwhile cause. That's right, Chris. We at Fenimore Asset Management are so pleased to partner with you to ensure that no one in our community goes without. The need is greater than ever, and we know it's not going to end soon. Tonight, we're asking for your help. 
As Chris said, we're matching every donation made tonight up to $15,000. Please help us not only meet, but exceed our goal. Visit the website to make a gift online or mail a check to the address listed. Please consider donating and joining us in the fight against hunger. Thank you and enjoy your evening. Thank you again, Chris and Deb, for your continued commitment to the Regional Food Bank's mission and thank you for joining us tonight and for your ongoing support. Remember, every donation you make tonight is matched and the auction bidding continues until 9 p.m. As 2020 has been a challenging time for everybody because of COVID-19, the Regional Food Bank stepped up once again in, in a surprising way. On March 16th, when our restaurants were shuttered um, by, by the state, and all of our 52 employees um, were sadly laid off because we didn't have a job for them, uh, the Regional Food Bank stepped up. They contacted us uh, and they wanted to let us know that they were here to support us after all the support that we had given them for all these years. And they provided 2,500 pounds of food to our staff to take home and make sure that their families were nourished and taken care of in such a challenging time. Uh, that was certainly unexpected and never in a million years did I think that we would be needing the support of the food bank, but for that, we will forever be grateful. Because of your help in bidding high tonight and bidding often, these are the reasons why the food bank can continue to help those in and around our community. So thank you very much. I'd like to acknowledge the following chefs again for all of their work in creating tonight's incredible meal. Chef Jose Artesh of Shogun and Del Mar, Chef Rick Orlando of Flavor Maker Spices, Chef Ken Keen of 677 Prime, and Mark Delos from his own hospitality. And I'd like to thank our friends, Chef Rick Orlando and Dominic Pernomo. Thank you again for joining us this evening and for your continued support of the Regional Food Bank. Please remember that our auction will remain open until 9 p.m., so make sure to visit the website. And if you're able to make a monetary gift, your donation will be matched dollar for dollar by Capcom Federal Credit Union and Fenimore Asset Management. Your support this year is more important than ever. Thank you again, and we hope to see you all back together in the dining room next September 2021. Have a good evening.